Hello my soccer universe, what a game it was uh, Saturday night. So many talking points, the only thing is, yeah, Juventus still set to win the championship. Uh, but yeah, before we start, uh, wearing this Roma jersey and now finally Fiorentina is washed, Fiorentina is right here, I did again the table, it's kind of the table here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight up there, nine, ten, eleven, kind of uh, in order, so uh, that's how I decided to do it. But let's uh, talk first about what happened Saturday, um, Lazio Sassuolo, also a crazy game, but it has to be said Lazio is in not good shape. But I have to say that the game itself was actually quite uh, intriguing and interesting from from, from the get-go because Sassuolo was dangerous. Uh, I think he hit the uh, crossbar once, had a goal early ruled out where I still don't quite know exactly why. Um, and Lazio always, when they were very dangerous, always uh, attack uh, through the right cut in pass and then Luis Alberto or Immobile uh, were missing except for the 33rd Luis, Luis Alberto. It was kind of, uh, we call it a uh, pressing ball in German where you know you shoot the ball it hits the other and then back and it goes into that in the 33rd giving Lazio a lead and a lead is on, on, honestly Otherwise, I would not, but I really want Lazio to win this one for once that they may be, and yes, I'm saying because wearing a Roma jersey, uh, that they may be keep the title challenge up. Uh, it was just not to be because in the second half, Sassuolo, who has been a freely at, at free attacking side and a very fun side to watch, not quite Atalanta, but not far off, to be honest. Um, get equalizer to Raspadori, then uh, it's a slightly open game, but you always had the feeling that Sassuolo is a little bit more in the game than um, Lazio. Lazio was more on car, car counter-attacking and again, um, Immobile not misfiring and all that kind of stuff. Caputo in stoppage time gets the winner. I was a little bit gutted, but I, I didn't really see Lazio anyway. I mean, they in Laun now lost three, three in a row. I think this ends Lazio's title challenge. Uh, didn't see much of Brescia Roma because I was watching the wonderful Barcelona uh, play, but you know, Brescia had a early goal ruled out. Or oh, not necessarily ruled out, I think Tonali would have scored, but the referee blew, blew the whistle uh, instead of waiting just a split sec and maybe then we can look over, over it because the foul ahead had of it didn't look like a foul. I think Perotti was just uh, taking a dive. Took Roma a long while to get into the game and Fazio with one of the messiest goals you'll ever see where like a corner kick, uh, in swinging corner, is bouncing in the box. Fazio gets on the shot and it somehow is safe behind the line. So 1-0 for Roma. Brescia had chances, but they just didn't convert them. Kalinic makes it 2-0 in the 62nd and Zaniolo gets back on the scoring sheet uh, in the 74th. As I said, Brescia just didn't take the chances. They could have really made a game out of it. But yeah, the game of the weekend, Juve Atalanta. I think everyone was looking forward to the ga to that game because uh, it was kind of the last chance. Can Juve be really uh, challenged, maybe even by Atalanta? And I have to say, Atalanta came out to play. They had, and uh, this was almost like Barcelona, like Atalanta. The only thing that was non-Atalanta like was definitely the jerseys. I don't like necessarily the green jerseys. Um, but yeah, it was an absolutely crazy game. Uh, with Atalanta dominating possession, pushing Juve around. I mean, at one point, I think that's 72% of the ball or uh, midway through the first half. It was nuts. They get the lead. I mean, Zapata had already missed an early chance. They get the lead through a wonderful... I mean, Papu Gomez is just one of those players you love to watch. He has the ball, look, it's more, it looks now makes a spin turn, puts it into the path of Zapata, who can make it 1-0 in the 16th, they should have added on to, to the lead. There was only, I think the only time that Juve was um, really threatening when Dybala with a wonderful uh, move with the right uh, outside of the foot, controls the ball that comes out of there and then with the left one, shoots it towards goal, but it went wide. Juve didn't have a shot on goal. Atalanta was completely dominating game and not letting Juve come. 
And same thing in the second half, although uh, you were a little bit more established themselves into the game, showed some courage, so uh, that was not uh, bad to see, but they didn't have a shot on goal except two penalties, both of them. The first one, a handball penalty that I probably, by the new rule, I can a little bit understand. Uh, I think it was the Rune who has the hands behind the back, then turns and puts them out and yeah, uh, gets hit. Uh, I don't think it was uh, on purpose that he got uh, hit and uh, you know, get hit here. Yeah, the way it's called, I understood this is a pep penalty, but it was a little, a little bit going. Ronaldo slams it in, but credit to Atalanta, they take off their best players. Zapata, uh, uh, Ilicic comes off and uh, Papu Gomez comes off. Who comes on? Pasalic, Muriel and Malinowski. This is insane and they, there was no drop in form. No, it actually uh, it stayed level. Malinowski had one huge chance and then in the 81st with his weak red right foot. He slams one into the net from outside the box. Yes, it took another very fortunate um, deflection. That's got to say, Juve gives up goals through deflection as, as of late. Uh, the assist was by Muriel, but you know, this was just a cross pass uh, along the box. And I thought, yeah, justice is served. No, not when Juve is involved. And uh, yeah, I shouldn't say that Juve is involved, but uh, it just felt like that way. A corner kick where uh, it has to say, Golini has to control the ball there. He just he cannot fix it out. You can catch that ball. But then... Uh, Egoin gets it on the outside of the box and wants to pass it out and Luis Mure is more or less just standing there running and the ball hits him here on the hand. He doesn't see the ball, it is just, ooh, yes, by the letter of the law, this has, has, has been called, but this, I mean, I heard someone say, suck the life out of, out of the game. You don't understand why that. This handball rule needs to be changed. This is crazy, absolutely crazy. Around steps up, makes it 2-2. Great game, many things to talk about in that game. Um, the long and short of it is that Juventus now uh, has eight point advantage over Lazio and nine over Atalanta and that means the championship for them regardless what happens in the other games. I cannot see Juve collapsing although they didn't play great. I mean they should have been played off the park by Atalanta but was not to be. Well, as for the Sunday games, it was actually a good day for the city of Genoa, a city that hasn't, at least in soccer terms, not seen all that many good days. And that's why I decided to wear Sampdoria in lack of any other winning teams from yesterday that I own a jersey of. Genoa. Yeah, lots of draws yesterday. Um, but first of all, Genoa gets a 2-0 win over Spal. Cali, uh, which I haven't seen, I haven't seen any highlights of Cagliari against Lecce either. Uh, it just means that Genoa again is ahead of Lecce, as we will see in the table la later on. The other two non-Genoa uh, re results here were actually a tale of stoppage time, to be honest. And uh, it was kind of funny because I initially wanted to watch Parma against Bologna and I saw Bologna take a 2-0 lead early in the game. I think Danilo in the third and Soriano in the 16th had it already 2-0 up and not really much going for Parma in the first, first half. So I said the second most interesting game, at least to me, uh, in this one is uh, Fiorentina against Verona. Where when I switched over, Verona took a uh, lead uh, through Faraoni after a nice assist by Amrabat. And Faraoni did this also very good, uh, like with the back set to um, a goal and then turned around. It was a really nicely taken um, goal. So I stayed with that game, uh, put the kids to sleep, um, you know, had the game on listening, of course, because I'm such a freak. Uh, have about what, what to say. Fiorentina actually tried to uh, move the ball. It was rather timid and not much going. I mean, the Ribery was a non, non, non factor. And it needed actually Cutrone and Chiesa coming on. And I have missed Chiesa. This guy was sensational the last two seasons, I have, I have to say. This season, for some reason, I has not set the world alight so far. I guess the uh, in, uh, in injury was uh, there as well. But Cutrone missed the sitter. Uh, we got surprised, but he should have put it in. 
Uh, and yeah, Fiorentina had 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 few chances, but also uh, Verona had a big one towards the end of the game uh, to make it 2-0, um, just hit the side net netting. And I think everything was kind of headed for um, stoppage time. At which point, what I didn't know is that Bologna rather started sitting back um, with the 2-0 lead, sitting safe, um, having maybe the occasional car, car contract, but being rather passive, standing very solid, and Parma attacking, 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 more and more, 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 but uh, seemingly not doing anything. I decided, when I saw the stoppage time was put up at the Fiora Fiorentina game, um, Let's see where this, maybe the Parma game is more interesting, but I saw 0-2. So I went back to the Fiorentina game and I saw that Fiorentina tried to launch an attack that didn't, that got thwarted. And then it seemed kind of messy and it's already plus five. And the referee uh, and um, Verona cleared an attack and the ref still allows Fiorentina one last attack. And there's Chiesa with a very smart pass. Uh, took uh, Cotrone, who, I don't want to say wrestle, but he sneaks past the defender and puts the ball right in the net, 1-1, 96 minutes, and uh, there were several celebrations, like Fiorentina just had won uh, the Champions League or something like that. Was rather uh, was rather emotional. And then I said, okay, let's da -da -da, we'll see about the other games. And then I look and I see that what Parma did was even crazier. In the 93rd minute, Kurtic uh, heads it in to make it 1-2. And uh, a bit more than a minute later, uh, there's a, a cross by Gagliolo that Inglese, and I don't know what the defender for uh, Bologna was doing there, heads it into the net and makes it 2-2. So two stoppage type dramas that I could believe that this is, hap is happening more or less at the same time. I thought the Fiorentina one was exciting. The one for Parma, I think, was even crazy, to, to be honest. That's uh, Memories of 99. Uh, since I'm wearing Sampdoria, um, they had a kind of a rough game at first uh, against Udine. And Kevin Lasagna with a thunderous strike makes it 1-0 for Udine. Uh, Do Cagliarella with an equally uh, skillful shot. Maybe more skillful than Lasagna. So Lasagna was more... Um, Braun, this was uh, Gagliarella, more brain as typically for him, makes it 1-1. One, one. But then uh, Udine changes, brings Okaka, Ofana, Terravest and so on, on, and it is an assault for the next 20, 20 minutes on the Sampdoria goal that somehow Sampdoria can weather. Udine doesn't reward themselves. And so it comes as it always comes. In stoppage time, Bonazzo, um, in the last 10, 10 minutes, Bonazzoli scores a goal uh, for, some, uh, for, some, for Sampdoria, they take the lead, then uh, VAR, um, this allows a Udine goal by Neutink in the 87th, and then in stoppage time, Gabbiadini, who had already a big chance before, makes it 3-1, so Udine also, get, uh, Udine Sampdoria also gets a win. And then everything goes for the big clash between Napoli and Milan, which I have to say, I watched uh, large swaths. Of it, I think I missed maybe 10 minutes total. Um, it wasn't a great game, but it was, I felt always, uh, it was rather once. I mean, it started out even, but then around the 13th minute or so, when uh, Dries Mertens had a, a rather sneaky shot on goal that I thought on Roman needed a save, Napoli was um, really, really really uh, choking Milan and having many chances uh, in Signe, I think Kai Hyun had a big one where I think he hit the post, uh, if I remember now correctly, and I thought oh, this is going to be a long day at the office however, <laughs> just on the counter, like, Rebic um, there, there was first a deep ball to Rebic, who has then decided to shoot over, uh, to lob over um, Ibrahimovic to Teonalis is free, who just slams it into net. I mean, Ospina is, gets hit, but uh, there's so much momentum to, to that shot that cannot do much with it. So uh, Milan take a 1-0 lead totally against the run of play. And um, this shocked Napoli visibly, but, you know, they still had more of the game. They get the equalizer. Uh, yeah, I mean, Donnarumma let the shot bounce, but yeah, yeah. honestly, he, he couldn't do much there. 
It's 1-1 one, one in the third, third to the fourth, and I still think Milan were happy to uh, just go 1-1 one, one into the half. This changed a little bit in the second half, especially when Paqueta, who a few times fumbled the ball needlessly. I have to say, as much as I like Paqueta a year ago, he lost a little bit his touch. Um, so Salem Marcus comes on and actually I have to say Milan then had better control of the, of, of the game and even venturing forward and just again similar to the one nil for Milan just when you thought that Milan has a little bit more grip on the game. I don't want to say they were much uh, better because I really think that Napoli uh, was that much dominant in the first half but Mertens um, yeah it Donnarumma did not look all, all the well uh, on the goal for Mertens. He uh, has to make a better judgment there. But he gets the 2-1. And I thought, yeah, well, that's, that might well be it. But, you know, bringing on then Bonaventura and Leao kind of again changed a little bit the uh, outlook of the game. And it is Bonaventura who is fouled in the box. Yes, he embellishes it on it, but I think it was a clear penalty foul. That Kessier, after loads of protests by Napoli, and I have to say, Napoli were really on fire and a lot of protesting going on. Kessier can convert it. And then again, I thought that Napoli had a little bit more of the upper hand and Milan actually um, didn't do them a favor in Salamak within three minutes with two rather, how, how to say, um, over-motivated challenges. Uh, gets two yellow cards and short succession is sent off. Yes, in both cases he hits the ball, but it was rather reckless. In the end, Milan and Napoli, Milan hangs on to a 2-2. Um, I have to say, from my perspective, it was rather lucky, but you know, I take those points. Sure, I wanted a win that uh, you can keep step with Roma, but given the uh, schedule now, I think you play Parma, Bologna, Sassuolo and so on, so you need to make the points there to get it over the line. Now to continue match day 32, um, there was a long time in, in, in the making since uh, it was Monday evening, I didn't really watch, I saw the house in the morning, didn't have time in the morning because uh, we needed to go some, somewhere and now it's da, 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 da. so kind, kind of late I read it the background again and I decided I can only wear Atalanta for this one because Atalanta is by far the best team at the moment in Italy closely uh, at least from playing wise and fun wise closely followed by Sassuolo which I don't have a jersey yet but yeah let's talk uh, briefly about Inter Torino um, I only saw all the goals but I got already the feeling I mean Inter probably had most of the game. However, Torino took a lead in the 70th minute. Horrible mistake, mistake by Handanovic and Belotti uh, puts the ball into the net, uh, make it 1-0. Basically, he, he tries to catch the ball, draw, drops it right in front of Belotti, who pulls it in. But for once, Inter can strike back and is not really uh, hindered by it. Ashley Young, right after half, gets the um, equalizer. Godin then gets his first goal for Inter just two minutes later. And Lautaro Martinez even gets an, on the scoring sheet as well in the 62nd. And then there was also uh, Belotti with a header hit the bar. But it was a clear Inter win. Which basically meant now that in the table, uh, everyone's talking about Atalanta. But the big winner in a way was Inter because they suddenly find themselves in second place behind Juve. And Juve enjoying uh, therefore an 8 point lead, 9 points over Atalanta. Which... <laughs> It seems kind of big for what they're showing and how the others are doing, but the others, when they're low, they're really low. Um, in the race for the Europa League spots, um, yeah, Roma really profited from the draw between Napoli and Milan, has as we said, and Sassuolo. <sighs> Could get in there, but I doubt it. I think the uh, Europa League spots are really between those three, and note that Milan is only on the qualification spot because Napoli has the spot already uh, so uh, whoever even if Milan would be in sixth they would be in Europa League qualification the fifth spot gives you the fixed spot um, also in the relegation battle things are a little bit clear now the Genoa overtaking Lecce again um, Genoa I should say Genoa 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 I have to learn this um, now they are again the also favorites to stay in over Lecce Brescia and Spal having no real chance and that they have no chance was shown on Tuesday evening. I wish I would have seen that game because it would have been fun. Uh, just wiped, <laughs> to, 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 to be honest. Atalanta pressure. Uh, 
Bro, no, no, not even the game with the most goals this season. Uh, uh, tied, tied for that. Because, no, Atalanta wants one seven too. So, Atalanta is free scoring. As we will see, they will score. They they will get to hundred goals. I don't see it not happening. They early on uh, score through Pasalic after Malinowski assist and not. It's not the big three on top. It, it's again uh, different. He's switching up his front rotation. Atalanta really starts reminding me of Lusk, where you spread the scoring over. Uh, you know, you have you have you have a front three that are kind of interchangeable. Yes, there's a number one formation, but you can always switch, and it doesn't really lose anything of its potency. Much like Lusk, also that the way they're playing. They do a better version of what Lask is playing, but uh, there is a clear philosophy there. You can plug and play players and they select players based on that. And you see it when those players go to other teams, they're often not that well performing. But in Atalanta, within the system, they are doing great. So they get in the second minute the lead, but Torek Rossa equally, actually equalized it in the eighth. And there was a little period where you thought, mm, yeah, maybe this is couldn't go. But then in a five minute period, the Romanovsk and Zapata score three goals. Brescia had their chances, but as it is always in their season, they are just not converting. AF, after half, Pasalic adds two more to complete his hat trick. Uh, by the 358, it was already 6 1. 6 1. And I thought, yeah, they, they might go for 8 or, or whatever, but seemingly they kind of held back. And in the end, after Tonali assists Balek in the 83rd, gets another consolation goal, make it 6 2. Well, not. Too big uh, of goal, but you know, it's for statistics. But Atalanta with that underlines that they, yes, pressure is not a big opponent, but the underline we are scoring for fun and we are having fun playing. Um, yesterday, uh, I did not see anything of Sampdoria's 3 0 win over, over Napoli. I had Bologna Nap uh, over Cagliari, and I had uh, Bologna Napoli on the side screen where I saw that Napoli took. Uh, an early lead and kind of seemed to go in Manolas uh, scoring a Paul Patana assist. Having much, largely the better of the game, but uh, Bologna scoring goals that are being this disallowed. And uh, there was, a, I think, an early 1 1 that was uh, right waved off for offside. My second half, I really thought that Palacio has scored the equalizer, but it was also waved off for offside. However, uh, Musa Barrow gives them the equalizer uh, overall deserved i think it was deserved one all draw um and then milan against parma that's where my focus was and i have to say uh milan played well but the first half was the typical stuff uh that i hate when your team plays well and you miss chances not the most notably romagnoli a header uh, you know go from the uh, ground onto to, to the bar then a few other chances uh even goal score by bonaventura that was then uh ruled out or rightly so for offside um or then very very late a penalty i think it should have been a penalty given on ibrahimovic uh, it went to var but then it was offside before <laughs> but Milan really, in around the 20th to the 30th, 30th, 35th minute, they really ranked it up and um, played well and were offensively quite dangerous. However, Parma launched already a count, counter -like via Giavinho, that was um, where Giavinho thwarted the shot uh, hor hor horribly, but then in the 44th, uh, the ball goes to Grassi, who cuts it back to Kurtic, who can, with a really nice shot into the near corner, beats Donnarumma to make it 1-0 for Parma and it was kind of, oh no, this is not how I want it to go because it was not really deserved. Uh, and the second half starts similar with Milan a little bit better but you know, corner uh, count, counter attacks always dangerous for Parma and fortunately enough, Kessier, uh, I, don't, I don't know where Charles Nogle gets an assist on that one because this was all Kessier. He gets the ball, um, goes a few steps and then unleashes a shot that hits the uh, upright and goes into net 1-1. One, one. And then just four minutes, minutes later, again, Cialanoglu, um, I think it was a corner kick by Cialanoglu, and Romanoli heads in to make it 2-1, uh, where I was afraid this was a pink of give, give offset. Um, totally deserved to be honest, because Milan really played better. The problem is they didn't immediately make the uh, third goal. And uh, Parma had some good chances. I think it was Grassi again, who hit the bar after a shot got deflected and Giavinho could have gotten the rebound and uh, he didn't even hit the 
goal line is. I think it went uh, uh, sideways. So there were really some chances for Parma where Parma could have equalized. And just in that uh, period, Celanoglu, after a nice Bonaventura assist, uh, takes the shot. And uh, also, it also was from outside, outside the box, makes it 3-1 for Milan. And that was the game. I thought that Parma might get another one, but I have to say, uh, it was fully deserved for Milan. That win was a good game by Milan. Um, let's look at the evening games here. Uh, one by one. Uh, Roma against Verona. Uh, they get a rather contentious penalty uh, to make it 1-0. I have to say that this was looked at and not decided that this was another penalty I thought was a little bit of a disgrace. Verona then had good chances and was in the game. However, Jaco uh, had one in uh, right before uh, the whistle, make it 2-0 Roma, which kind of made it safe again. Pessina though, right after the half, puts one back and Verona had chances. They probably could have deserved 2-2. Uh, on the other side, Roma missing many chances to make it a clearer scoreline as well. So it ends 2-1 Roma and Roma kind of really holds on now, I have to say, meanwhile tightly to this last, um, uh, or to this fixed Europa League spot. Uh, fifth place, it will be a hard task for either Milan now, now Napoli to claim the fifth because Roma is doing quite well there. Um, what can I say, Let, uh, Fiorentina, I didn't see much, but I heard they played well and beat Lecce 3-1. The game of the evening though, Sassuolo against Juve. Uh, deja vu for Juve. Within 12 minutes, they're up 2-0. Danilo scoring and Iguain scoring, both on a Pjanic assist. Pjanic who is, has been shipped off to Barcelona uh, by, by the beginning of the season. And you thought, yeah, Juve will be cruising against Sassuolo. No, Sassuolo is one team that, like uh, Atalanta, doesn't give a you-know-what. And they keep on attacking, pay a little bit more free-flowing, and, look, and looking also for local talent, which is really nice to have. And so Djuricic, just uh, before they have in the 29th, makes it 1-2. And then after they have within three minutes, they turn it around. Deja vu, like what they did a week ago against Milan. Berardi gets the equalizing fit first. Caputo, for another one, makes it 3-2. Uh, Unlike Milan, though, Juve doesn't completely surrender and they actually get through Alexander and equalizer. I thought that uh, from what I saw on the high highlights that uh, Sasa Solopro would have even deserved a victory. And it's really weird what Juve is doing. They are playing well. They already played well against Milan, Valmerag. Uh, I really think they did. And then they completely surrender and suddenly it's going nowhere and you wonder why. You play well and then completely horrible. There's something, I, we all know, the Juve team is really badly put together. And I don't fancy them at all coming up in the Champions League. I mean, they, they might even have... I, I really hope for them that they make it past, um, past Lyon. But I can see them struggling with that one. There is just something not right with Juve. It has to be clearly said. Um, and Lazio, rather disappointing, nil-nil draw. And again, uh, they were not necessarily the better team. That was Udine. Lazio is going all... The season for Lazio is totally going pear-shaped. And now to end this very long um, Serie A video, I put on the Inter jersey because Inter got a rather convincing 4-0 win at Spa. We unfortunately, didn't have the highlights race, so I haven't seen it. However, Alexis Sanchez seemingly played a big role in that one, uh, assisting Candreva on his first goal, then um, scoring the third one through Biragi. Biragi scored uh, just five minutes before, 60th and um, in the 55th. And then um, in the last, there was no Sanchez involved, but Young uh, assisted Gagliardini. So Inter getting a 4-0 win, as we'll see, cementing their second place. But before that, Genoa uh, lost to Torino 3-0, which uh, was a good result for Torino, getting them a little bit off the schneid. Uh, Bremer gets the early goal a little bit against the run of play, but then it was all Torino. And Lukic, and especially Belotti in the last minute with a really nice strike. Uh, make it 3-0. With that, the Serie A table, I have not been too many changes. However, Atalanta is now leapfrogging Lazio and Lazio continues their downfall. Juve, we already knew that, has secured the Champions League spot. And suddenly, since Juve is a little bit shaky, we have slight chances of Inter and Atalanta winning 
uh, the league, but the re remaining program, they have a game against each other. Atalanta's and Inter's uh, final days are not all that straightforward, so that's why you will still see Juve going um, through on that one. Uh, Europa League, as I said, Roma looks kind of strong. Napoli and Milan, I, I wish, but I don't see really Milan going into fifth place, let's put it that way. Uh, Sassolo though is now already six behind uh, Milan, so kind of looks safe, but you, we will see the next few games for Milan, it might uh, turn out differently. Let's see. Uh, in the relegation battle, I think Udine, with, um, despite losing, is still uh, looking good. Torino, Liebfrucht, Udine, Sampdoria got themselves out, out of trouble. It's really between Genoa and Lecce. Those are the two for the remaining spots, so we'll see how that will turn out. Now for the upcoming matches, and I take the next three rounds because I will be on a vacation next week, so I will not make a midweek video, so uh, probably after that round. And anyway, they play now wall to wall. Let's see how long that video will be, because I will only see highlights, so there will probably not too much to talk about for my part. Um, as I say, Saturday, Milan-Bologna, that's probably the easiest game that uh, Milan will have in those three rounds there. Um, if you look at title challenge, I think the big one, I mean, the last two games, it's Roma against Inter and Juve against Lazio. Those are two um, big games, um, more the Roma-Inter, to be honest. Juve-Lazio, I honestly think this Juve will win this, despite all their troubles. Their, uh, Sassuolo has a game at Cagliari, and I think Verona against Atalanta is not all that of a foregone conclusion, but I would expect Atalanta win there. Um, then, in the midweek round, and that's where I'm fully on vacation, Sassuolo Milan, huge game for Milan. I'm actually a little bit sorry that I probably will not see anything of that. Uh, a classical uh, matchup is, of course, Fiorentina at Inter, but I um, don't think this will go all that well. Roma has a rather easy tie at Spal Atalanta. I always forget Atalanta, I always on top, I always playing the first game against Bologna. Should be uh, three points there as well. And Juve against Udine, I don't expect a slip up there either. So you already see how this is going uh, totally Juve's way. Because uh, on the next weekend round, on the 24th of July, on Friday already, Milan playing Atalanta. Um, huge game for both of them. Uh, by that time, Atalanta will probably have the Champions League spot wrapped up. But Milan will still struggle to get into the Europa League. Uh, especially, I, I don't know, you know, if all well, what they do against Sassuolo. Sassuolo has a tough game though at Napoli. Inter should get the three points at Genoa. And Juve should actually beat Sampdoria, you would think. Uh, the two of them actually play a midweek derby. I forgot Roma, Fiorentina, also a classic duel. So, lots to still to play there in Serie A, but you know, we already see where this is kind of going. So, let's see how it will end up. Anyway, very long video, I understand. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, but there were many, 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 many great games in there. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!